Welcome. Welcome to the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grande Western. This is Brian. I'm glad you're here. And if you're not already a subscriber, I want to encourage you to subscribe because when you're a subscriber here, you get access to a lot of great model railroad video uploads. And so now that you're subscribed, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video upload, which is coming up right now. Welcome to the Iron Horse Model Railroad and our four-part series on Uncle Digger's Cabin. This is part one, how we design it in Tinkercad. Part two will be 3D printing. Part three will be airbrushing. And part four will be the assembly. And what we're doing right now is making the base. We've got it sped up about five times. And that's uh, two millimeters tall right there in the end scale. And uh, with a little platform on top to hold the pieces, we're using the text box right now for piece identification purposes. So you'll be able to match the walls to its place on the base. What I do is I take and cut up, cut them out about a millimeter down. And now we're placing the first wall in. That started out as just a regular box. And there's a roof piece I'm using there. I make sure that the pieces are um, pushed into each other so they will fuse well. And then once you group them, there's a solid piece. You don't have to worry about any uh, fragile areas on the piece. It's one solid piece when you do that. What we're doing right now is we're putting the logs in. And this will give the appearance of it being a log structure. And we're doing a little copy and paste in there to save time. This is kind of a trickier part. Got to get this in there just right. If you'll notice, I flipped it 180. That does make it easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you would be interested in me doing a video a tutorial um, that's more basic on Tinkercad, leave a comment below and let me know. And we're just uh, applying the walls right now. I do, with these simple cabins, you know, I do one side, copy and paste it, flip it, do the other side, copy and paste it, flip it, putting a roof in now. We're gonna make it uh, where the roof extends over and makes the um, covered part of the porch itself. Normally I put uh, a separate little roof, but we're trying to keep this cabin simple. It's a smaller cabin. Um, all right, the main structure is basically taken care of here. Now we're going to start doing a few windows and those kind of things. I pushed it back in on that one side because I didn't want a window on the back. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make a little cutout in the logs to house the door frame. And so what I'll be able to do now is push that door frame in there. We need a, a cutout. So we can see light, grabbing some windows. And we'll get those everywhere we want them as well. I go ahead and place them on the wall and then I'll come in after the fact 
and uh, once I got them exactly where I want them and then I'll come cut out the window opening when you group anything in Tinkercad if you want to go backwards you have to ungroup it so sometimes it can get messy if you see I'm having to go back and change things that I really didn't want to change it was because I improperly grouped something or I grouped something that I didn't mean to group is a better way to put it at some point point. and so what happens when you do that is later in the build you start doing something to the one thing and it's happening to the other and you didn't intend for that to happen there we go I can copy and paste spin and now they're balanced right if, if as long as I don't move them left or right I know they're exactly centered with the other ones on the other side we'll get us some beams in there if I haven't changed those to rectangular yet like a 4x4 four four, I'm going to do so working on a chimney here there you go <clears throat> excuse me and so what we do is we start the chimney on the bottom and we pull it up straight through so we know it's straight instead of making it two piece but then I've got to cut it so that'll be coming I'm pretty sure I showed me doing that Cut the top out so Santa Claus can get down. And as you see now, what I'm going to do is use the roof to cut the chimney. I'll duplicate the roof. Then I'll make the duplicated piece the cutout piece. And then I'll use that to cut the chimney in half. And it'll split it basically where it needs to be then I'll pull the top part of the chimney up just a tad duplicate it make the duplicated piece a cutout piece and cut out the section of the roof to house the top chimney piece looks like I'm grabbing a door there door frame maybe there we go You see, uh-oh, I had an extra piece there that I didn't mean to have. And I think I just discovered one of those things I told you about where I grouped too many things together. I'll be honest when I say I have no idea what I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh, okay. I had the roof grouped together and I have to split it because you can't print it that way and I'm getting ready to take the model apart and uh, lay it flat so it can be printed and what I've just done there is made my model for the 45 degree cuts at the corners so what I can do is I come in now I pick the roof up and I come in and I'll ensure that I'm right there on the corner. And then I duplicate and I cross group with the cutout piece to make the 45s on both sides all the way around. I guess I didn't make the beams rectangular, 
rectangular yet. I'm going to have to go back and do that. We just line everything up. All right. And once you get it right, then it's going to be time to, if I'm not mistaken, I think I need to put the letters on the back side. Here we go. All right. And what I'm doing right now, as a matter of fact, I just figured that out, is I am ensuring that the pieces are flat on the deck. Um, what you have to do is export the STL file to your uh, slicing program. And then you go check the slicing program on the bottom to ensure that the pieces are laying perfectly flat. Um, they will not print well, or if at all, um, if they're not. And so now I'm naming the pieces so we know where to put them to match them on the base. It's kind of a tedious part, but it's very nice because um, I work with many models in different scales. And so I even get confused as to what piece goes where until I flip it over sometimes not often a lot of times there's like indentions like the, the piece itself will have uh, that one wall has an indention for the chimney well you know where that goes and that kind of thing and so we're naming naming the roofs now but you also have indentions in the roof if you see so they pretty much tell you where it goes as well We want to thank you very much for watching today. Look out for episode two coming soon. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, click the bell icon, and share this with your other model and friends. Let's get it.